Hi, welcome back to Will Candles. My name is Sherry and my videos are all about candle making in the candle business. Today, we are going to talk about and I am going to reveal my top secret for getting great hot throw. So the first thing you're going to need to do is look at the wax and you're going to look for the heating temperature, the adding your fragrance oil temperature, the pouring temperature, and the melt temperature. From there, you're going to move on to the wick. You are going to have to choose the appropriate wick, one for the size of that container or type of candle that you're making. And then you're going to have to consider the best wick for the type of wax that you are using. So you want to go to one of these websites, for instance, Candle Science, and they have a wick guide and they also have a tool that you can put in your container size and then you can also put in the type of wax that you're using. They are going to suggest um, a type of wick and the size of wick. Okay, so once you get that, that is a starting point for you to start testing the wicks and see how they burn. And then also another variation to how these wicks and the wax is going to burn as far as hot throw is the type of fragrance oil that you use. It One could work very well with one type of fragrance oil and then it may not work so well for another fragrance oil. So it's very important when you do your testing to do a test for every fragrance oil that you add to your collection. Okay, so the next thing you're going to move on to is how long do you allow your candles to cure once you've made them? Again, this is going to be based on the different types of waxes that you can use. If you're using a paraffin wax, it's going to be much shorter. It could be one to two days. It could be one to three days. If you're using some type of paraffin wax blend, um, it could be a little longer. If you're using a soy wax or a coconut soy wax or some other type of soy wax blend it's there well most people tell you that the sweet spot is two weeks but i generally um go by the five days to one week rule and that has worked very well for me every now and then if you get a fragrance oil that you really really like and it's just shy of that hot thrill that you want it to be Go ahead and allow it to cure for the two weeks because sometimes after two weeks and even after a month or so, I have revisited candles and the hot throw has definitely improved. So that golden um, rule of thumb for the two weeks cure time, it's not 100% for every single fragrance oil. So you just want to just do your test and that's the best advice that I can give to you is with every fragrance oil, and if you change any other variable like the wick or you change the type of wax or you change the container size, run a test for that candle and then keep really good notes and you will be able to move forward from there and add that to your collection if the hot throw works out for you and go on to the next candle. Okay, so moving on to, let's say adding more fragrance oil for a better hot throw. That is not always the answer. And fact, my kind of rule of thumb is, if you are burning it, you are breathing it. So if you can get a great hot throw from a minimum amount of fragrance oil, I just, I just think that that is the best route to go. So think about that before you consider adding more fragrance oil. Have you tried and have you tested every single different variation that could have affected that hot throw some kind of way? The other thing that we wanna move on to is adding additives, which like for instance, with my coconut soy candle, I do 6%, but if you go higher than 6%, they say that you can go up to 10% if you use an additive like Vibar. Vibar is an additive and you can, that's a whole nother video that it will help enhance the color and also allows the wax to bind better with the fragrance oil so that you can add more and then to see if that's going to increase your hot throw. I'm not a big fan of additives, but sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes maybe just a little can go a long way. Again, 
I would go through every possible variation to get a great hot throw without adding that additive. But at the end of the day, if it's a fragrance that you really had your heart set on and you really wanted to add it to your collection and whatever your preferences are, by all means, give it a go and see how that works out for you. And always remember, sometimes you can add too much fragrance oil. So sometimes adding more is not always the answer. Sometimes lowering it just a tad. Believe it or not, I know that sounds crazy, but when you test your candles and you really get in to the fine tuning of these candles, I think you're going to discover some things that were unexpected and some things that just just work. And if they work, that, that's your goal. You've reached your goal to make a great candle that has great hot throw. Okay, so next we are going to get into some of the specifics of the temperature of the wax. So, and don't worry, we're getting to the secret. I'm going to reveal that um, probably following this. Okay, so now let's take, for instance, Nature Wax C6 Coconut Soy. The melting point is between 125 and to 130 degrees. So that's when you're you're heating it up and you're stirring it up and you look out and you don't see any solid pieces left. So you have probably reached this temperature that now you have reached the melting point and all the wax is liquefied. Then you're gonna have a suggested pouring temperature and it is between 120 and 165 degrees. And again, this is for the C6 coconut soy wax that I use. So for me, through my testing, I have found out if, even though it's between 120 and 165 degrees, if I go below 145 degrees, I have found that the wax was not as smooth and not as creamy. It did not adhere to the glass jar as well. So I know that from now on, when I use this wax, I'm never going to pour below 145 degrees. So that is starting to narrow down that gray area where you want to add your fragrance oil and when do you want to pour it into your container. Okay, so, and again, on here it says the typical fragrance load is 6% or less. Fragrance loads up to 7 to 10% are possible with the addition of additives. And we've already discussed that. So just put that in your notes and keep that in mind. Okay, so the basic guidelines with the melt point, 124 to 130, so you know minimally you're going to go up to that uh, 124, 130. Now it says to heat wax to temperature between 160 degrees and 200 degrees. Do not go over 200 degrees because it can cause your wax to have a discoloration. So now you know you at least got to get a minimum of 160 and you've got to stay below 200. So once again, you've narrowed that gap of possible temperature where you're gonna be adding this fragrance oil and pouring. Okay, so let's talk about the heating of the wax. Wax breaks down into molecules. Fragrance oil breaks down when heated into molecules. Your goal is, okay, let's say that this is that fragrance molecule. Here is the wax molecule and it's floating all around in this heated wax. You want that wax molecule to encapsulate the fragrance molecule and hold on to it when you're pouring this candle and curing this candle so that when that wick is set aflame, then you're gonna have all of this fragrance out into the atmosphere. And that's what's called hot throw when you walk into the room and you smell everything. So again, you have your fragrance oil and you have your wax oil molecule and you want it to encapsulate. So here's where we get a little more detailed. And I know my, my voice has been bought, I think because my room was a little cool last night when I was sleeping. So pardon my voice. Um, okay, so I have set my heating temperature to between 185 and 190. And why? Because that is the safest, warmest temp to not cause this coloration. I'm not going over the 200 degrees, but I think the warmer that wax, the more open those molecules will be. 
And that's what you want. You don't want them to just be opening. You want them to be fully open like a flower that's blooming. You want that bloom to be all the way open. Now, you have seen probably on other videos or even me demonstrate, when you add that fragrance oil and you're stirring. Okay, and I know that I mentioned in the video that says how to make um, coconut soy wax candles that I don't stand there and just constantly stir. Because I believe if those molecules are in that wax pouring container and they're just going around and around and around and around, I mean, think, think about it. When do those molecules have a chance to do the encapsulating? So I let it breathe for a minute. I swirl and let it set for however many seconds. And then I come back and I swirl again. I don't keep it in constant fast motion. And I think that my brain, my science brain, tells me allow science to do what science does, allow heat to do what it does, and allow those molecules just a second to exist and encapsulate and then go back to swirl. And then you hope that more fragrance molecules and wax molecules encapsulate and then you keep going. As long as you do not drop below the temperature that you plan on pouring. They also suggest that you add your fragrance oil right before you're going to pour. So at some point you are going to, the temperature that you decide to add your fragrance oil, a minimum of two minutes. I try to work up to the four to six minutes. It just depends on how long that heat can be maintained. They talk about fragrance oils evaporating off. I have not experienced that. I'm not saying that it does not happen. This is why you need to do your own test and come up with your temperatures. So I'm going to look down here and I'm going to tell you, um, I definitely heat my wax between 185 and 190. So you're going to have to know that if you decide to add your fragrance oil at 165, okay, let's say that wax temperature is at 185. The moment you pour that fragrance and oil in there, that temperature is going to come down quickly. So you're already going to be down close, depending on how, if you have, like if you're making just two or three candles, you're going to have about this much wax in, in your wax pouring pitcher. If you're making six or eight candles, you may have this much. And so that temperature is going to stay warmer for a longer amount of time. So you have to take all those factors into consideration. So my goal is always to add it at 185, knowing that it's gonna immediately, if I'm making a small batch, it's gonna immediately start falling down to that 165 temp. So I always try to allow more than the two minutes of stirring time and not go below that 165 temp. Every now and then, sometimes I, I'm doing something else or I'm distracted and it may go a little lower, but definitely I'm going to add that fragrance oil, the least, or I should say, the lowest temp I'm ever going to add my fragrance oil is at that 165. And just know if you add it at 165, it's going to immediately drop because you just added that fragrance oil, but definitely you want to pour before you get to 145, at least for this type of um, candle wax, which is the C6 coconut soy wax. Okay, so let's get to the secret. Let's get to, okay, so all of these things, and, and this was just an overview of all the things that you're gonna see on other people's YouTube videos, and um, you're gonna hear me talk about. All of these things won't even matter if you don't do this one key thing. And it's a secret, but it's not really a secret. To me, it was common sense, but I don't really see a lot of YouTubers or even in the books, I don't see them really talking about this. And that is, here you go, drum roll please. You have to find fragrances that do really well in the type of wax that you are using. Number one, how are you gonna find these fragrance oils? You're going to watch, okay, number one, you're gonna watch YouTubers like me and you're gonna watch our fragrance oils reviews and make sure that you're watching someone that um, is giving you hot throw information or is kind of, I mean, I know my channel's pretty new, but I'm pretty well an established um, candle maker at this point in time. 
but make sure it is a reputable person that you can trust in this information. Or, and if it, you're not quite sure, because sometimes someone new has great information, and just watch that particular YouTuber and maybe watch a couple of others and see how that information matches up. So if you listen and they say, oh my gosh, this was so strong. I could smell this all the way down the hallway and make sure that they are using the same type of wax that you intend to use. Then you will be able to take those notes. And the next thing that you want to do, drum roll again, is go on to that manufacturer's website. Let's say go on to Candle Signs. You want to read the reviews on that particular fragrance oil. When you are reading the reviews, you are looking for one, the word hot throw in that review. Did they talk about the hot throw and if it was good or if it was bad, or are they just hoping for hot throw or did they actually test the candle and the hot throw was really great? The first two to three pages, because you're going to get down to the end of the reviews and then it's going to say, see more. And then you can click on that. The first two to three pages should give you a strong indication of what that hot throw is going to be. If you're on the fence about it, uh, you know, order the fragrance oil and the small one ounce, um, I call them the, the sample bottles, and test it out for yourself. If you see time and time again, poor hot throw, no hot throw, and then you also see that, okay, they did this in either soy wax or coconut soy wax or something really close to what you're using. I'm going to say I would not purchase that fragrance oil for the wax that you're using if those reviews after two or three pages of them. Okay, so if you get on there and you see people talk about, oh, it was horrible hot throw, da, 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 but they don't mention your wax, okay, you can't go by that because they tried something else. And so you have to find some reviews that get close enough. And usually fragrance oils that are really, really strong, you're gonna see, oh my goodness, it was so strong, all oh, that hot throw. And it's gonna be really clear and really evident that you're probably going to have a successful hot throw with it. if you do all the other things like the wax, the wick, the candle carry, <laughs> the temperature kites when you're supposed to add it, if you do all that other stuff. So I'm gonna give you an example Okay, so this is Flaming Candles, and I know my light sometimes blares out these labels, but this is Flaming Candles Coffee House. This, it, when you are testing, like when you get your little one ounce um, sample size, I call them, and if you open that up and you do like this, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so strong. That's a good indicator that this may do very well with a really great hot throw. And always remember, that's if you have all those other things done correctly first. <laughs> so and then another one, this right here, Coffee House from Flaming Candle, very, very strong hot throw and coconut um, wax. I think I did 464 and also in my coconut soy wax. You might have to tone this down a little bit, but it's very strong. And if something is super, super strong, you might want to also like smell from the cap instead of straight out the bottle because this is a, a brain opener, trust me. Okay, so another fragrance oil that I have sitting here beside me is Blueberry Cobbler from Candle Science. This one, I'm gonna tell you, the strong, the smell is so strong coming out of this bottle and it's slightly off from what you smell in your candle, but does it ever make an amazing candle? I love this. So you can't judge this because it's so strong, it, it kind of throws you off of what the actual fragrance is going to be once you mix it in or make a candle and then it's burning and you smell it it's going to be amazing like usually when I make these candles and people see them at my craft shows or whatever and the labels I made it real cute to go along with it and they see there's like oh my god I need that I gotta get that but this is one that they go cuckoo for cocoa puffs over so smell this one I would again smell this one out of the lid it is amazing. And if you smell it out of a bottle, it's going to probably make your brain expand. So super, super strong fragrance oils. So the secret is how to choose fragrance oils that have a high probability of producing a great hot throw and the type of wax you are using in your candles. Because if there are some fragrance oils, and trust me, I have a whole box full of them. Um, no matter what you do, if you are using a soy wax or you're using a coconut soy wax, 
you're never going to achieve that amount of hot throw that you are hoping to achieve with that candle. And I have had candles that I have let cured for months <laughs> and they still, they still never produced a great hot throw. And I was so sad. I had the labels made. I had everything planned. I could just envision it in my collection and it just not work out. So the secret is find fragrance oils that are known to have great hot throws and the type of wax that you are using to make candles with. And you do that by one, you can watch reviews of candle, like just watch random YouTubers. You can keep watching my channel. I And every time a new collection will come out, I will do a fragrance review. And more than likely, I'm going to tell you, because you can also somewhat go by the cold throw out of the bottle. And that is a throw that, you know, as soon as you open the bottle, you smell Sometimes if it's so strong and you're like jumping back, that is a good candidate for having a great hot throw. Not always, it's not always 100%, but it is certainly a better indicator than you just randomly, you know, like, oh, I like the name of that fragrance. Oh, I wanted something that smelled like the beach. And you just go out here and start buying all these different fragrances. And now you've wasted a ton of money. You've also wasted a ton of time because by the time you order the fragrance, it arrives, you make the candle, you allow the candle to cure. And then you wait for that hot throw after, you know, two weeks of, or one to two weeks of curing, and it has failed. Whereas you could have found fragrance oils that had a higher probab probability of having a great hot throw for your type of wax that you use, and more than likely you would have had a successful candle. So after watching reviews on different YouTubers or reading different reviews, if people post them, you know, like in a blog type of thing. Um, and then you go on to the manufacturer's website. Some of them don't always give reviews on their candle fragrances, but sometimes you can just put in the Google search for reviews and other people have reviewed them and put them into their blogs. But like Candle Science is a great, great place. I'm the flame, Flaming Candle will offer you great reviews. Don't go by the stars. Go by, get down in there and read. Find someone who's talking about the hot throw and not just that they hope for a great hot throw, but they actually made the candle, they burned it and watch for someone who is using a wax that is your exact wax or something very, very similar to what you are using. And that is the secret to getting great hot throw. It is the fragrance oil that you start with. And then you can do all these other factors in and you'll probably just have so many candles with great hot throw you're like oh my gosh she was right and i'm gonna be like i know <laughs> so anyway so that's it that's the secret and um i hope this was helpful and i hope um other people on youtube start talking about that i mean every now and then they touch on it a little bit but most of them they just kind of blow off like reading the reviews i mean even when you're purchasing anything a sofa or a car or whatever read the reviews on these products it is a great place to start to see um you know what are the probabilities of this being a product that you're really going to like so that is it oh and by the way if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button down below and hit that little bell it will remind you when i put up my next video also i want to thank all my new subscribers welcome i i'm so happy some of the um comments that you guys have left have just left me like oh i'm gonna cry they were so kind and i hope that i'm providing informative information i'm going to continue to work on things um to give you so don't think if it's taking me a minute sometimes i have to like do research i have to create candles that are like you know i want to show the wicks so like a wick testing where you got to make them and you got to you know so it can take like a week or two to get the props that i need to create that uh particular youtube video so just be patient and i am reading every well for now if it keeps growing i hope i can read as much as possible but i do read your comments and i do so appreciate them i'm glad that you're finding um great information here and all the other kind things and um so many of you have said sorry for your loss of your son i certainly appreciate that you've stolen my heart so that's about it for this week and thank you so much and i think that's it so i'll see you guys next time bye